Thank you, Dr. Alka. Come, I'll just make a comment. Because, because we are running, running short, short of time, time I, I will... will. Thank you. Thank you so much for that kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. At the outset, I would like to thank Sanjay and Nita, of course, uh, and Team IDEC for this great opportunity. It's always a pleasure to be in this meeting because there is a lot of science and a lot of, uh, you know, new discussions that happen. And it's always uh, good learning in IDEC. So, uh, the drawback is that Every time since Neeta is involved in uh, making the program, she always gives me something to do with the bestie. And I am not considered a diabetes person here. <laughs> so today I am going to speak on the concept of ABCD, <coughs> clinical evaluation for stage uh, disease staging. Uh, this is uh, not exactly a new concept, but very recent concept. And in this presentation, I don't have any disclosure. What I plan to do in this presentation is to first build up the concept of what is exactly ABCD. What is, why we need to use ABCD as a new, you know, terminology in the field of obesity. And then, of course, the staging that, finally, I will talk about the staging that is based on this concept. So, I don't have any disclosure. What is ABCD? ABCD is basically adiposity-based chronic disease. It is a new term to use in plus of place of obesity or a new definition which, which is likely to replace obesity as a definition. Now, we know obesity is a major healthcare challenge and we know that there is this you know, sharp increase in prevalence all across North America. India is uh, no way behind. If you look at the top graph, it is uh, 2006. To 1990 and between 1990 and 2016, the prevalence of obesity has increased by almost three times. And we have a significant number of obese individuals in India. And uh, this graph sh also shows you the uh, age specific, uh, age and sex specific prevalence of obesity in India. Now, we recently had the NHFS 5, which is the National Family Health Survey. And this again looked at the increase in prevalence between 2016 and 2020. That is National Family Health Survey 4 and 5. And in four years' time, actually, there is almost 4% increase in prevalence in obesity, both in men and women. It increased from 21% to 24% in women and from 19 to 23% in men. And the number of thin individuals is decreasing. Another important thing is this time they also looked at the first time any, you know, obesity survey looked at the uh, waist hip circumference. And to everybody's surprise, almost 50% of men and 57% of women have a waist hip ratio which is abnormal. They have an increased waist circumference. And this is a big challenge. Now, we know obesity is defined as abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that may impair health. So, the definition does not define weight. It is abnormal or excessive fat that is associated with poor health. But the definition does not convey, the word obesity doesn't convey it. It is a complex subject. The definition of excess of fat is also not clear. It is a continuous trait, not marked by clear division into normal and abnormal. It is very difficult to measure body fat, unless we are doing a MRI or, you know, say, advanced uh, DEXA in every individual, we can't measure body fat. And then, because we can't define body fat, we are using surrogate measures to define obesity based on body weight. And the commonly used parameters that are used are body mass index, waist circumference, and waist hip ratio. And waist circumference is uh, one of the defining cutoffs for defining central obesity and waist circumference, waist hip ratio also. Now, there are studies which have clearly shown that there is a strong correlation between body mass index and total body percent fat, both in men and women. Then why can't we use body mass index as a, uh, you know, parameter or def definition for obesity? And why do we need a new term? So basically, there are multiple objections to use of uh, term obesity or body mass index as a parameter of obesity. 
And this is because there are varying cutoffs for different ethnicities. Western people have a different cutoff for body mass index. We have a different one. The effect of increase or decrease muscle mass on body mass index is also, you know, uh, something to be addressed. And there are independent cardiometabolic risk factors that is that is associated with waist circumference even independent of body mass index so it doesn't convey the complete risk so obesity basically is considered as an imprecise term it is defined on the basis of bmi cutoff not based on the adiposity or adipose tissue or fat mass and does not convey health risk of obesity since the definition is based on an anthropometric metric uh, measurement it is not considered as an actionable term or definition as its relationship to individual health is also obscure. So you say, say BMI of 30, it doesn't convey what kind of health risk is there. So it conveys very little about the condition which is associated with increased fat mass in the body and the health risk associated with uh, it. And it also carries a great deal of stigmatization, negativity with this term. In fact, the stigmatization is so much that there was a joint international consensus statement on ending stigma associated with obesity. This st obesity stigma, you know, kind of denigrates the p people with obesity. It puts the blame of obesity on individual itself that they are obese because they are lazy, they are eating more and so on. Again, if you look at BMI at different ages, with age the percent body fat is changing, but the BMI may be same. And there is loss of muscle mass with aging. There is increased fat mass, but the BMI remains same. There are different, you know, uh, different uh, relationship with different uh, risk parameters with BMI also. So uh, it's a metric of bigness or adiposity amount or, or the body weight amount, not exactly adiposity amount also. And it does not also explain the body obesity paradox. We have studies which have shown that people who have... Uh, coronary artery disease or congestive heart failure, if they are obese, the risk of mortality is lower. So it doesn't explain obesity paradox. It doesn't explain the metabolically healthy obese phenomena. And it was not a component of the major you know, epidemiological studies like Framingham or Poole cohort studies from, for CVD risk scores. So what has happened in the recent time is that ACE, AAC and ACE American College of uh, endocrinology have created a chronic care model with advanced diagnostic framework and also clinical practice guidelines which help in you know uh, um, clinical practice algorithm for comprehensive management of obesity which are offering you a comprehensive system of obesity management and this is called ABCD or adiposity based chronic disease it is not solely based on the body mass index as in previous models and it emphasizes on the complication-centric approach that primarily defines the therapeutic decision-making uh, based on the different parameters. So ABCD is the new diagnostic term for obesity that explicitly identifies this as a chronic disease, which is now worldwide done, and alludes to a precise pathophysiological basis and avoids the stigma and confusion related to differential use of multiple meanings of the term obesity. And the first time there was a position statement from ACE in AAC in 2006 led by Jeffrey Mechanic, who was the president at that time. And this uh, basically has four key elements imbibed into this definition. First is the positioning of lifestyle medic uh, medicine uh, in the promotion of overall health, not just the initial first algorithmic step, but it is the central to management of obesity. Second, it has standardized protocols for comprehensively and durably address the weight loss and management of adiposity-related complications. Third, the, it also helps in giving you an approach to patient care through contextualization, that is, who needs primordial prevention, who needs second primary prevention, who needs secondary prevention. And it, it is also giving you a, uh, you know, uh, system of developing evidence-based strategies for successful implementation, monitoring, and uh, optimization of patient care who are, with, uh, who are having adiposity and its associated risk or complication. So term adiposity directly refers to adipocytes and adipose tissue, not body weight. It incorporates the impact on health that can relate to quality, 
distribution and function of adipose tissue. All these are important. It is not just the adipose tissue, it is the quantity, it is the quality and the distribution. The quantity of fat mass can correlate with the certain, uh, you know, adverse clinical endpoints and adiposity-based uh, complications, but is inadequately reflected in the term BMI. BMI just gives you body mass index. It doesn't give you the amount of adipose tissue or dysfunction. Then distribution of body fat is also very important. We all know that central fat distribution or more of visceral fat is associated with insulin resistance increased risk of diabetes, while if you have more of gluteofemoral fat, it is protective against cardiovascular risk and risk for insulin resistance. Then the functional attributes of fat are also governed by different factors and the adipocyte secretome, which includes the various factors or cytokines secreted by adipose tissue, not only they are important, it is also the cytokines, hormonal factors and uh, other uh, hormones which control this adipocyte secretome are also equally important. And once there is dysregulated secretion of all these factors, it is going through bloodstream and it is going to affect the multiple organs leading to the health risk associated with obesity. So when there is when this abnormal function of adipose tissue happens, this ultimately translates into disturbed physiology and development of symptoms, which define a disease. And if disease persists for more than three months, it is called chronic disease. And once there is a chronic disease, body gets into adaptive and maladaptive uh, you know, processes, ultimately achieving a steady state and leading to ongoing development of complications. So, for example, you have an increase in amount of fat based because you have genetic, genetic predisposition, ad, environmental circumstances, uh, less physical activity and so on. Once there is increased body fat, uh, the fat mass, it leads to, you know, uh, malfunction of the adipose tissue. This is further influenced by your physical environment as well as the cultural environment, ultimately leading to adiposity-based complications and different disease stages. And the, the concept is that ABCD should be used for medical diagnostic purposes and precise reference to chronic disease state with related disease stages, which is divested from the stigmata or ambiguity associated with the word obesity in general public sphere. So obesity is just not body mass or the body weight or the large size of body. And now uh, in 2019, the European Association of St for Study of Obesity also took this up. And uh, this is a position statement which uh, looked at ABCD as the diagnostic term. And it recognized that scientific societies both in Europe and North America now recognize obesity as a frequent, serious, complex, relapsing and chronic disease. That represents a major public health care problem. In addition, the term obesity is fraught with stigma and negativity regarding the personal character of the patients with disease. And now, worldwide, the word obese patient is now is considered as an unparliamentary word. You have to call them people with obesity or person with obesity. You call, don't call them obese patients. Similarly, you don't call them diabetic patients. So, so obesity complications are determined by two uh, main pathophysiological processes, the physical forces, that is the fat mass, and the dysfunctional fat or the sick fat, which are embedded in the cultural and physical context leading to the specific ABC, these stages that are defined based on this concept. And BMI as a unique measurement of obesity does not reflect the whole complexity of disease and should not be considered as the basic definition of obesity. Yet, BMI is simple, easy, and expensive, inexpensive way of identifying the, you know, extra um, fat mass in body. It is still being retained, but you have to look at the stages of di disease based on the ABCD algorithm. The limitations I have already discussed about uh, BMI, so ABCD conceptual framework of obesity incorporates the characteristics of adiposity, including the total amount, dis distribution, as well as the dysfunction of adipose tissue. It also takes care of the physical, which is the man-made or human environment, which includes food availability, transportation, and so on, 
It also includes, it takes into consideration the cultural, which includes the socio-political, economic aspects, various customs and, you know, rituals that we have been following over time. And uh, together with the clinical burden derived from the impact of dysfunctional fat over time, which leads to development of complications and gender-specific disease stages. So th you have adipose tissue which is increased. Now this is increased because of multiple reasons. You have genetic predisposition, you have you know, epigenetic factors, you have uh, decreased physical activity, and so on. Once there is increase in adipose tissue, there is dysfunction, which, and first thing is the distribution. So there is a tendency to accumulate more of central fat versus peripheral fat. Once there is more central fat, there is dysfunction of the fat. And if there is, uh, you know, uh, dysfunction of the fat, you get sick fat and development of uh, insulin resistance and other diseases. If you just have more fat mass without dysfunction, you get more of the mechanical complications of obesity. And all this is influenced by your man-made environment, which is the... Uh, you know, man-made environment as well as the socio-cultural factors and together they combined, they lead to development of the so-called adiposity-based chronic disease with complication which are gender-specific in given in the disease staging system. So, and based on this, they also define the levels of prevention that are required for different stages. So, genetics environment, epigenetics, all lead to development of primary disease risk factors. And people who are at higher risk go on to development of ABCD or obesity, so-called obesity is ABCD now. Now, these individuals can be insulin sensitive if they just have fat mass without dysfunction of fat or they have insulin resistance where, where the fat is dysfunctional with the you know release of more cytokines, free fatty acids and so on. These people will develop components of metabolic syndrome and down the line they will develop diabetes, uh, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, hypertension, dyslipidemia, NASH, NFLD and so on. While on the other hand, people who remain insulin sensitive, they develop more of mechanical issues like osteoarthritis, uh, obstructive sleep apnea and so on. Now, early stages, before the development of obesity, you have to look at primordial prevention in people who are exposed to the obesogenic environment. So people who, now everybody, we are all exposed to obesogenic environment. Let us assume that. So we all need primordial prevention. Now people who are at higher risk of developing obesity and they are also exposed to the, this environment uh, who have risk factors, actually they should be on primary prevention for obesity. And once we develop obesity, you, are, you need the secondary prevention of obesity now to prevent the complications of obesity. And once people have got complications of obesity like coronary artery disease, di diabetes and so on, you actually need to put in tertiary prevention measures. So the, this slide actually gives you, you know, all kinds of measures that are thought of in primordial prevention or primary prevention, secondary prevention, you have to advise them weight loss to the tune of 10%. If you have complications in place, maybe you need to give them more weight loss. So this is the algorithm uh, for staging which is proposed. And uh, actually it is a busy slide, but you will see here that not everybody with BMI of more than 30 is considered, uh, you know, a bad patient. So people who have BMI less than 25 or 30, 23, depending on ethnicity, actually all are cases for primordial prevention or the primary prevention if they are having a risk factors. People who have BMI more than 25 or more than 20 or more than 30 or more than 25, they, they can be classified as stage uh, zero of obesity and you have to see whether they have already some complications which is metabolic syndrome, pre-diabetes, diabetes, diabetes uh, dyslipidemia and so on. And if any of these is present, then you define them again on the basis of presence or absence of disease. So stage zero is when there is no complication and you have to put them in secondary prevention mode. And if you have stage one, 
when it is mild to moderate complications, and you have to look at the tertiary prevention. Stage two, which is more than one complications, again you go to tertiary prevention then. And these are the components that you have to shoot in management of these obese patients. So irrespective of the BMI, for the same BMI, you may be having different approaches for different people. People who do not have you know, established complications are at a high risk, have a different approach. People who do not have any risk have a different approach. And people who have complications have a different approach. So this is the basic concept and of ABCD and ABCD based uh, staging of disease and how you go about managing this disease. So with this I conclude my presentation. I would also like to invite you all to the RSSDI initial conference which is happening on 6th to 9th of October. Uh, 2022 in Chennai. I would also like to invite you for the uh, ACCD program that I do in Delhi every year. Thank you so much.